Welcome back. Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop along with Eric and Mark is behind the camera. It's our new team at Pro Shaper Workshop and uh, we were able to borrow a hood from uh, a super volunteer, Jim from Ellington, Connecticut. He had Austin Healy 3000. He's had it for about five years and I said, geez, I think Jim's got Austin Healy 3000. So he brought the hood up. It wasn't in the best shape. It was a little beat up around the corner. Had these hood to hold lockdown uh, locks on here. So we had to straighten it out a little bit. And as you can see, it's tight over in this corner. So we're gonna have to move this. Remember when we were putting the uh, diagonal measurement with the trammel points, we were still off a little bit. So that has to be addressed. This has to be racked this way a little bit. And this was all loosey-goosey because it was all cracked and this flange was cracked. Eric uh, filmed me earlier doing the welding. We've done a lot of welding videos, so um, we, we did it out of sequence a little bit. We still got that to fix, but I don't want to fix that yet until we get this reshaped. We, uh, Mark earlier today made a bunch of profile gauges and we're quite a bit off here. We still got to planish this out. We got to grind the back of these wells. Now we'll have to grind and dress all these wells, but we'll move it around before we uh, grind those wells down to where they need to be. Uh, after we get it moved around, then we will grind the wells. So that way we don't have to put uh, extra stress on those newly welded joints. This has got to be addressed, but we're coming around the horn. But uh, what I wanted to do right now is to show you uh, how things can change uh, so quickly. Uh, this weekend, a new opportunity uh, came to the Pro Shaper Workshop, and I want to show you what I mean by a new opportunity. All right, so like I said, things can happen quickly. Uh, I think it was Friday of last week, I got an email, it was a couple paragraphs long, and uh, it was actually somebody from close by from Worcester that said that he had a 1937 Talbot Lago a fiberglass copy of the original masterpiece by uh, Giuseppe Fagoni of Fagoni and Falashi. And I couldn't believe it. And uh, I, I immediately called him up and, and asked the story about it. And he told me the story and we intend to do a separate video on the story of how this car came into being. This car meaning this fiberglass version of it, which is a replica of the original 1937 car, which they made 11 of. And we'll, we'll do a nice comprehensive history of both the car and how the company came about to make these and uh, how it eventually ended up in the shop here. But the intent here is to make an aluminum body from the fiberglass one. And this is all the surface information. And uh, this was done by an engineer down in, uh, in Florida about uh, 25 years ago. We started on this project and he made quite a few of them. And that whole comprehensive story we're going to uh, we're going to uh, cover in that other video, which will be maybe later this week or early next week. But now I just want to give you a quick look at the, the beauty of this car and our intent of making it into aluminum. And um, the current owner, his name is uh, Jills, his first name, and uh, his last name is very difficult to pronounce. It's a French name, French car, French owner. So it's perfect. We, I'm teaching him how to do the flexible shape patterns. He's never done them before, and we're making the flexible shape patterns. And our intent is to, in the next two or three weeks, is to make this fender in 060 aluminum. And we'll capture all that uh, information. We'll, we'll be making the uh, profile gauges and the, and the flexible shape pads and showing how they're being used and everything. But uh, I just wanted to give a quick look on this car. And I think it's a 104 inch wheelbase. It originally had a, a, a six cylinder uh, Talbot Lago engine in it. And it actually raced, a version of it raced in, uh, in Le Mans in, in 1937. And it's a coupe, of course. We're considering making a convertible version as well. It's some of the most uh, sensuous lines on any automobile. And I would put it in the top five of the, the greatest automotive designs ever. 
and I don't think it can ever be topped. I don't know in that top five whether it's number one or, or two or three or four or five, I don't know. But I think a lot of people uh, will agree with me that this is uh, a absolutely outstanding uh, aesthetic uh, beauty. It has <coughs> front opening doors with the rear hinges. It has a, a V dashboard that has originally had uh, engine turning on it with some really nice gauges. Um, and we'll get into all the details of that. It has flat glass. Uh, has full skirts on your on the back we, uh, tire wheels, and it on the f glass version they didn't put a trunk in it, but in the aluminum version we're going to put a trunk in it like it had in the original, and we're going to delete these. These are added on uh, uh, non-original style uh, tail lights. We're going to go back to the original style tail lights, and if Mark can come around and see this little fin in the back and the whole back look. It's got beautiful little skinny bumpers that follow the lines here and this is just going to be an outstanding project. So I just wanted to give a quick glimpse of it and we're going to be doing a lot of video on this project. Alright so we did uh, some welding on the flange and you have to get both sides. Right here was broken. We put the reinforcer, the steel reinforcer was broken right there. We both welded it both sides. Uh, we have a few uh, open cracks now, still right here. I didn't want to weld that because we had to reshape this. And off camera, if Mark can come around here, this was all out of shape here before. And we had made these gauges, and the gauges have to be adjusted now because it's the gauge is actually a little tight now. And it turned out that this piece, which we didn't know would fit or not, actually is the right piece and it's starting to fit in there pretty good. We still got a little bit of tweaking but you see these register right here and they're pretty close to that too. So there's these little brackets that we took off that they um, a, a, attach right here and they're pop riveted on. I de-rusted those. Those will have to go back on. So this might need to be tweaked in a little bit. Um, we have to cut these welds down after we still do a little bit of adjustment. We don't want to stress these uh, if we move all this heavy uh, moving or rough gross moving of the shape with the weld all ground down. It's going to be a little weaker so we'll leave them fat like that when we're doing that. And we, we made a bun bunch of uh, profile gauges. We're going to have to reshape that. And then this is short right over here still. Uh, and what I was thinking of doing with that is I'll just use this as a, a uh, somewhat of a description. I'll take a piece of heavier metal. It'll probably be about half inch thick or so. Well, I can use my slapper actually. And I'll put the piece of half inch metal coming out like that. And I'll have a block of wood under it. Because I can't get a hammer in here, so I got to project the blow in. So with the block of wood over here, and I can hammer that like that, that'll bring that, it's from here to here, that edge has to go down about, oh, three sixteenths of an inch or so. And I still need to make that little pocket up there. Mark can pick it up. That's where the screw goes in for when you put the bu headlight bucket in. Um, so it's coming. We got this. Uh, fit in. This is the, the the little reinforcer bracket that Mark had made. We made it off of this side and we got that tweaked and aligned around in the original holes. We still got the gauge that Eric made over here that that's got to be all tweaked. So we got a little bit of moving still to happen plus the uh, this has to tweak here too where the hood is askew a little bit. That's because this has to go this way a little, so we would have to do some kind of pull operation where we just kind of diagonalize pull and uh, bringing this edge down and then massaging this and then finally we'll get to the point where we'll do all the planishing. Grind all the wells, planish it out, and then at that point we'll be very close. Um, of course, <laughs> This is a pretty complicated project and I didn't know how long it was going to be, but it looks like uh, 
a lot of people are hanging in there with us and we want to make this as good as we can. Uh, well, we're going to start another uh, series on uh, maybe on the uh, Talbot Largo that we showed you a little section of earlier. That'll be making aluminum fender for that. And we still got all kinds of stuff to do. People are clamoring for the Scout fender repair. I've got the Cadillac front fender repair. There's all kinds of stuff to do. So I'm trying to get uh, as much done as possible. Plus I have a ton of jobs in the shop and I can't neglect those too much either. So we're doing our best. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, give us the likes, ring that little bell, tell all your friends, give us the comments. It's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. The metal is clay. Thanks for watching.